that if we look at, at things that people do very often and in the same settings, so things like condom use or seat belt use, then suddenly your intentions and your rational thinking no longer predicts your future behavior. So you may say, yes, I intend to use a condom the next time I have sex. But that intention, even though it's in, in your head, is not really translating to your behavior. And instead, it's just that the strength of that past kind of inertia, what you've done before, whether you used a condom the last time or you didn't, that is the strongest predictor. And of course, for us, the, the interesting thing is that maybe the vast majority of the things that we're interested in fit over here on the right-hand side, right? They're these daily or near-daily activities that people perform without thinking about them too much and in the same setting. And indeed, other work has shown that um, if you take a, a, an intervention approach that focuses on trying to shift people's intentions, that works for the kinds of behaviours over on the left, right? For things that people don't do very often, like vaccination, then knowledge raising, changing people's goals and their planning, that's, that's an effective way to change those behaviours. But the same is not true using those same approaches right, for things that people do very often without thinking about them too much. So you know, the takeaway message is investing all of those resources in trying to change people's intentions and their rational thinking will buy you some behaviour change, but not very much and much less than for the kinds of behaviours over on the left-hand side, those less frequent ones. 